Hey, this is Garrett Adkins with the Generation One More Time podcast. I'm here with Aaron Lamb today. You'll recognize him from the GameCube podcast we did last time. But uh, this time, we're going to be talking about the singing, dancing X grapes called <laughs> the California Raisins. That's the main subject of this episode. But first, we're going to talk about that intro a little bit. Aaron, you and the audience are in a very similar position in that you and the audience are the first few people to hear that song ever. It's from a game called Mary Kate and Ashley Sweet 16 License to Drive. Game so good they named it twice. And you introduced me to that game and that song. So why don't you tell me a little bit about how you found that? So when me and my brother were younger... We, uh, we, we played a lot of GameCube. We played thousands of hours of Melee. We'd wake up, we'd go to sleep. <laughs> we played Melee in the middle. I forgot to mention that. <laughs> but we, okay, we put like thousands of hours in it though. That's the point. And um, then one day my sister comes home with Mary Kate and Ashley, Sweet 16, License to Drive. And it, it, she realized, you know, she needed a few blocks. For her to save her game, save her fucking two mini game game. Um, that's beside the point. <laughs> so it, it devastated me. She she deleted our our Smash Brothers save save file, of course, because what else would you do in that situation? So me and this game went off to off to a good start, but then then I heard that intro, and in all my all my. My negative thoughts about it just flew out the window. Um, 16. I was probably like 10 years off of being 16 or 11, something like that. But that song stuck with me. And then, 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 then you played the, the nice, the nice, uh, that, that version that, uh, they cut out the, uh, the cheater girl. Right. And, um, it was even better. It was incredible. It had a very grungy early 2000 sound to it. Which I, I might be some of my favorite kind of music, and it had some ska on there too, and I, I'd, I'd say maybe even the end of that song was incredible. Like the, um, I really like the the drums at the end. Right. They, they pick up very ska, you know. Right. Ska's not dead. Um, <laughs> it's just yeah. Ska's not dead. <laughs> it's surely <laughs> alive. <laughs> 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 um but yeah dude I, I liked it a lot i like his um his little bit of raspiness to the vocals which I, i'm always a fan of um it, it, it took it away from uh hey this is from a early 2000s girl game to like which was still a, a, a incredible song to like this is just a kick-ass grungy little fast-paced you know right a little ditty <laughs> And I, I'm a big fan now. I'm, I'm glad you uh, you were able to uh, get in touch with the. Let me let me tell it. Oh, you're right. You're let right. me tell it. Uh, so I I heard the song and after you'd shown it to me, and I think we had talked about wanting a clean version. Mm, how it didn't exist on the internet. Yeah. Um, I looked, and I'm not the only one who was looking for it, but. I looked uh, over plenty of forums where people were asking, "Hey, where's the intro song to this? We would like I'd love a clean version, you know? Just people wanting to know the name or the artist or whatever." And I decided that I would be the last version to be wanting or <laughs> <laughs> I decided I'd be the last person wanting that version so i found this site called moby games which is like the imdb of video games i was able to find the credited vocalist on moby games named uh, mr troy jacobson and he had a profile on there uh you click on the hyperlinks and it shows you all the games they play they've worked on so he was also credited as like a level designer for the game. I messaged him through Moe Games, waited a week, he didn't answer. 
I reverse image searched his profile pic, found his personal website, contacted him through the website, waited a week, he didn't answer. I then contacted him directly through his email, which was listed on the website, uh, and then waited a week. And all these times I was basically saying, hello, Mr. Jacobson, um, you're credited as the vocalist of this song. I would love to have a copy of it. I would love to have it as the intro to my podcast, and I would love to release it to the world. But at the very least, if you are able to, I would love to have a copy of it personally because I'm in love with this song. I think it'd be perfect for my podcast. And I I know that there's a ton of people who are eager to have it, eager because they obviously love this game. Maybe it's a part of their childhood. So I, I just said... If you don't feel comfortable letting me have a clean version of the song, just let me know and we'll go our separate ways. And I waited a week after I had emailed him directly and I emailed him one more time. And I said, at risk of being portrayed as a stalker, you know, this was going to be the last time. I messaged him and I finally messages back. It's a copy of the restraining order. (laughs) I told him, uh, Mr. Jacobson, I know it's, I know sometimes emails can be buried in the more important stuff, you know? So I'm just going to follow up with you on my request that I made again. If you don't feel comfortable with it, You can let me know or don't. This is going to be the last time that I message you on this matter. Um, I thank you for your consideration and I'd be honored. But as a creator of my own, I know how hard it is to trust somebody else with your work. So wasn't expecting to get this message back from him, you know, but he did. He messaged me and I mean, I was awestruck whenever I saw the notification pop up on my phone because I was not expecting him to message back, you know? It it could have been an email that he had never used or or never used anymore, you know? Is he, uh, do you know if he's still in the, like, in the music business? Like, what's he, what's he doing now? I'm gonna get to it. I'm gonna get to it. He gave me a little bit of the history of the song and said... Hey, it, I have a version of the song that's never been heard because I sold the rights to the song that has been heard to the gaming company, which I'm I'm not going to name on this podcast, even though they're out of business, you know, but I'm not going to name them. It's public knowledge. I don't know if I even remember the name. So... He, he, sold he sold the rights to the song to the gaming company. And so he gave me a little bit of history, you know? He kind of ties with, with that version, is Pretty much. One time payment, it's gone. Well, okay. He said that he was at a party, some kind of party in Silicon Valley or wherever video games are born. And he was talking to a guy at the party, and he mentioned that he worked for the video game company. The guy said, oh yeah, your company wanted us to give them a song for free for use in a video game. And he said he was just a level designer. So he wasn't really... He had a band, you know, and I've I've heard some oh, of his other stuff. So Jacobson was... Um, but Troy Jacobson was... A level designer? A level designer. Ooh. Troy was just a level designer, but he went back and told the company, hey, I'm going to do the song for your video game, because he did... He was in a band. Yeah. And so they ended up busting out the song that that we just heard sent it to him and they said that they wanted it a little a little bit more they they more ended up graphic yeah they ended up adding a cheetah girl to it yeah so 
I just thought it was cool that he he went and made the song because he was already working for them instead of them trying to rip off a band for free, you know? Yeah, which is really messed up. That's why I'm not going to say the name of the company. They don't. Yeah. But it's public information. So I, I very much want to thank Mr. Troy Jacobson for letting me use his music um, and let it, giving me the honor to post it and put it out to the world publicly. You can get to Troy Jacobson if you want to look him up at uh, tumbleweed.com. Or he's also on ReverbNation.com slash Troy Jacobson. Uh, you can listen to some of his music there. He's, he's got more. Ooh. Some of okay. it. He's got a, a few videos. Is um very, very, very like 90s mm-hmm. videos, you know? Yeah. Is, I, it, is it more like um kind of fast paced early 2000s or is it? He, he calls it like ska. And I, I think it is. Ooh. A little bit of ska, okay. but it's very, very grungy ska. You know, I like that. I'm, I'm big on um, on grunge music. I like a lot of Nirvana. He did. He did like one other video game song that I heard for a game called Death Tanks. Death Tanks. Uh, just basically one of the regular straight up artillery games where yeah. you're a tank, they're a tank, and you just shoot different projectiles. You know. But nothing, the song that sounds sounds the death tank like some ska, you know. <laughs> I mean, oh, I'm sure it's, it's very it's very for that one. I'm I'm gonna do my cover here. Death tank. Oh yeah, death tank. You know, <laughs> it's like I'm it's like I'm there with them. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> but you can you can hear that music there. I did see a, a video on Reverb Nation uh, of him and some friends in the '90s, like out there in their freaking it looked like a nickelodeon fucking convertible because it was like it was like i think it was green and orange uh-huh. and very 90s and very of the times uh, they were out there all over that car uh him and his old long long-haired buddies um hitting the doobies i mean they were they were driving around it said it was like a school lunch break it was just an interesting look into 90s culture, you yeah. know, late 90s. Like Everybody was at. Because you and I were either born or not even born. Yeah. But um, it, they weren't, they were sitting kind of on the, <laughs> on the doors of the car instead of actually down in it. So, you know, a oh, okay. little dangerous. A little on but, the edge, a little life on the edge. But they're teenagers freaking invincible right in their death tanks and (laughs) and all all that i again i'm just gonna thank troy for giving us these these the memories these golden plates that we can actually dig up and show to everybody yeah thank you thank you for the tracks but thank you for the memories too oh yeah it's it's very nostalgic to hear that song although i've never been a uh a big fan of the game itself. That that song stuck with me definitely for years. I am so thankful to have the honor. You know, yeah, it, it had such more. Like like you said, he's into the the ska and grunge. And who says ska is dead? You know, right? I, I, I'm, I dig it, and then I'm I'm really into grunge. So hearing it with more of that edge, a right. song that I already liked, Whew. it really it really elevated it. Right. Once once they got the the cheetah girl out of there. <laughs> Well, yeah, you know, every song is written, it's written the way that it's written for that band to sing it. So, yeah. like, if you end up changing it in a certain way, unless you kind of change it in a major way, it's not necessarily going to work, you know? I'm not knocking the Cheetah Girl. She, she's nah. a good singer. I'm sure she's a great person. But I, uh, I didn't mind the I didn't either. old I version thought it was, either. I thought it was fantastic, but hearing this version, it's like... It's night and day almost. Oh, yeah. Like, you don't realize how like you're like oh this is real good and then you get the even better version you don't realize how good you got it you know? right it's 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 something all right so let's get into let's get into the california raisins Ooh, I, i'm ready so we together we just watched meet the raisins will vinton's meet the raisins and aaron on his own has been playing the unreleased ness California Raisins well, let me video talk a little game. bit about that first. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, 
so I haven't played a ton because uh, it's hard as hell, and I don't. I can't even describe how difficult this game is. I thought maybe this had something to do with it not being released. No, it's just because um, by then the sales were dropping for like the raisins and everything. So they they didn't see it as a source of money. They couldn't do anything with it, so they just never used it. But um, I did some research. I, I can mention that it was pretty damn cool. Um, he, but uh, so I, play, I started the game, and there, there's four there's four uh, four levels. There's there, there's the cannery, uh, the maze maze, the juicery, and the grapevine. All of them kind of garbo, being honest. And then because um, I, I tried I tried the freaking I tried the juicery the cannery. And then, um, okay, hold on. Another, I know I'm going on a tangent, but the enemies in the game are the grapes, right? So the premise of the game are the grapes. It, the premise of the game is the California raisins and their music has, has disappeared. They've been kidnapped. And then, like, the, the raisin council, it's weird. They're all wearing white wigs. They tell you that you need to go, you need to go save them from, from, uh, their rival band, the, um, crap, what was it? The wild, uh, they're, they're grapes. And I was really confused because they're great. They're the same entity, right? Raisins and grapes. So I didn't know if this was a race thing or a, a lifestyle difference. I don't know what it is, but that I found some continuity error right there in the first place. And then when, when I got to the the cannery, I, then I realized how shit the game actually was. Right. I started in like um your attack is like is it a gun? I don't remember what it is. It might just point his finger or something, some projectile. But um the things come at you at like Mach five and then your ass is getting hit ninety percent of the time. And then there's these one enemy that's like uh it's wearing some it looks like a satellite, but it's a great and it bounces around and it has the worst pattern known to man in the game. And I cannot just not get hit by it. There's no way. So that sucked, and I got a game over every second, every five seconds from that thing. And then I, I was like, oh, I need to be able to talk about this game. So I look at this dude's walk through, this dude's playthrough on on, uh, on YouTube, and he beat it in 14 minutes, and like barely, even he got hit. But um, so you're trying to collect these. I don't know how canonically it makes sense, but you're trying to get the four golden music notes so that you can go to the grapevine or something like that, <laughs> and then go save them. And so there's a weird ending. I didn't look it up because I went on another tangent. How this? It's actually really sad how this game was found okay. so um as you know it was canceled it was buried nobody knew it existed and then uh this guy he did an interview about it he um he was at a game store and some some woman was with their child and they were uh they're trying to sell their games their old nes games because there's someone at xbox it was like o2 or something so it's like an original xbox they're trying to sell the old nes cartridges they have and um he looked at them and all of them had a, they said they could only give them like 50 cents for each of them or something like that because they had um handmade labels on them they weren't the correct labels so the dude's like hey sell it on ebay you'll make more money and then um for helping him she get he was he was like what about that he was interested in the raisins one because he had no idea what it could be she, so she gave it to him for helping him out and then he, he asked her like Where, where'd you get these because like he thought maybe they could be something special and then she said like her husband worked at a game company or something like that and so she took the rest because there are games that are already out but he uh he wanted to, he was just like all right i'll take the raisins and then um she's like you're gonna sell it and he told her no so he he, he didn't sell it because like he told he gave her his word he wasn't gonna sell it because he was a collector he collected capcom games and it was a capcom game and um so he went home and he put it in and he played the game and like just himself. He had no idea this was an unreleased game until like months later or something like that. He found some posts of people talking about it and he was like, I have the game. Like they're talking about this lost media and he's like, I literally have it. So he, uh, he got a ton of offers. People were offering him thousands of dollars for it. And then he was like, no, I told this lady I was going to sell it. So he took it and he dumped it online, the ROM. And, uh, he did the, you know, the moral thing and dumped right. it online. And, um, so everybody had it, and then at that point he was like, "I don't, I don't really need it anymore. I got it out there." He didn't want some collector like just not posting it. You know what I mean? Right. But um, at that point, uh, people weren't interested in the cartridge anymore. They're interested more in the um, the unseen lost media. So instead, he was later on he sold it for like six hundred. Instead, he think he got like an offer for like three thousand. It right. cost him like twenty four hundred dollars. But he did the right thing. He posted it. Yeah, and then the, the guy that did the interview and he ended up like his mom, the the, kid, the guy's mom contacted her. It turns out the he made he made a very a very sad demise and he ended up like being a victim of like murder and stuff like that at like oh. twenty two. Yeah, and like pretty bad. Like they like it's everything on fire and yeah. And I read that I was like, oh my gosh, like that's that's sad. But with like the guy that did the interview helped uh, his mom sell uh, sell all his games and his collection and stuff. So he did help her out that way. But uh, 
uh, it took me down a path I did not expect, but it was pretty rad to learn some backstory to it. I love that. That's like an unknown history. Like, oh, yeah. You know? Oh, God, hold on. What's that dude's name? It was the guy on YouTube. He posted that in his comments, like the, the interview. So I should probably be giving, giving him some credit. It's the guy that was he beat it in like 14 minutes. Made me look like a joke. <laughs> Nintendo Complete. That's the, that's the guy that did it. So that, that's my experience with the game. It's kind of ass, but it's got a great story behind it. That's that's all. That's all we could have hoped for. Of course. Really. I think honestly a lot of raisin media that you and I have seen is mediocre but meme. Yeah, you know. Of course. That, I mean that's what draws me to mediocre the but like ironic. There is not a lot to them. We watched 30 minutes of fruit puns basically yeah, when we watched the meet the, the raisins. raisins. And the funny thing about the the um California raisins is like it's like they're slowly fading. I look up information on them, and I don't know if, like, like simple information. Like, I looked up... I know there's names for the raisins, right? I looked up the names for the raisins. It is so damn hard to find a list of more than, like, three raisins. The only ones I know are Tiny Good Bite, um, Ben in the Sun, and I, I learned one today that was pretty great. It was uh, Justin X Grape. Justin X Grape. I thought that was pretty great. And then, um, other than that, I don't know. Nobody posts it. No, it, the information's kind of just... Did, did you find that on the um on the like collector website? No. Okay. So why they had a lot? I well yeah, but that's from because you also started me on collecting the little figures. Mm-hmm. So in trying to find the names of the little figures, um, they're they're all from like Hardys and stuff. You know, I don't know where oh, all so you where got them. Came up with the uh, the names, but where you got the names? They there was this website that I got on, and I couldn't tell you, but I'm sure I'll link it in the description. It had documented all the like. It's like a collector guide, you know. It had I all the know. raisins and everything, and all their names. To, to think of that. And all the different variations, and it even it, on the toys. it even had like the stuffed versions and stuff. Yeah. But from what I could tell from my reading is that the name like Tiny Good Bite and Justin X Grape and Ben in the Sun weren't like official until there was some kind of contest to name California Raisins. Oh, okay. So, because the ones we saw in Meet the Raisins, which came out in 1986, like Stretch, Red, and Stretch, AC, Red, Red, and what was it? The other one was Bebop. Bebop yeah. yeah. And there were some toys, the, like, I think the earlier ones were more plastic. Yeah. Uh, and so you can get the, like, plastic raisins, and they're labeled, like, Bebop raisin, uh, AC raisin, and all that. But, like, the ones that we really like, the sort of rubber ones, that's where, like, Ben in the Sun came into play, and... Justin X Grape and Tiny Good Bite. For a while, it wasn't until Ariel like pointed it out, but for a while, I couldn't understand the name Justin X Grape. Oh my and God. I thought it was the stupidest freaking name ever. Mm-hmm. I still think it's the stupidest name it's ever. It's one of my favorites. But it's, it's pretty, I it's think it's pretty funny. Justin X Grape. My head did not wrap around it. That's another thing I'm, I'm really confused about. The Grapes are the enemies in, you know, <laughs> in the NES game. But if you, they were all a grape at one point, you know what I mean? And how did they become a raisin? This is this an age thing? Is this a... Because the lore of Meet the Raisins says that they were squished. Well, no, they were still smooth later on. That's another thing. They were, they were still... It was really weird at the beginning of the documentary. They were still raisins, but they were smooth raisins. They weren't grapes, <laughs> but they were smooth raisins. It was really... No, no they, were, they were grapes at that point. I did they were not round at all. They were just smooth. <laughs> they were just smooth. Well, they're, they're like those red wine grapes, you know? Because mm-hmm. cause whenever you have green grapes, they turn into little green raisins. Do you know that? Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the, one more, like the yellowish. Yeah. Yeah, they used to have those at school. I only ever put those with, like, when they put all the sugar and shit on them. It's the only time they ever gave us, like, the yellow kind. Wow. I've been that, they're, like, brown and black. And I've been running that, um... I kind of want raisins now, man. <laughs> I've been running that raisin, uh, fan account on Twitter recently. Really? Uh, that's at RateMyRaisins at Twitter.com. Um, 
I very frequently will search up the term raisins for mentions and stuff so I can get in there, get some followers, you know, yeah, deep dive in there. A lot of the time, it is just people expressing their disgust for, like, oatmeal raisin, raisin bread. People hate raisins. I don't understand it. it. They're nature's candy. I know. It's it's not fair. I mean, I tell you that, but when's the last time you ate a fucking raisin? <laughs> but they're not... <laughs> exactly. They're, <laughs> exactly. They're not bad. They're not. They're, they're probably the most middle-of-the-line food in existence. And I think that's why people rag on them because nobody seeks out raisins it's kind of like ah dude i finished my lunch but i'm still hungry (laughs) you can have my raisins (laughs) you know what i mean nobody's nobody's actively buying raisins and i think that's what what led to the death of the california raisins so it's actually not and i kind of looked into it as well the death of the california raisins So, in the late 40s, like, I think 49, Harry Truman, President Harry Truman, began the National Raisin Reserve. And I think they began... He's known for two things, the (laughs) atomic bomb and the National Raisin Reserve. I think that he began a few other reserves, really. But at that point, all the raisin growers in California came together into sort of a union. And Uh they wanted to be able to control, like, market prices. So what they did back then was they would grow their crops and then a certain percentage of their crops would be taken into the government's hands and put into the reserve. So, like, they'd use it to feed school children at lunch or put it into storage the for next year. all of the nation's schools is, is only fed raisins. I'd be sick of it, too. <laughs> but they all came together <laughs> so that the market price would stay fair and so everyone would still buy raisins you know yeah and because apparently it's sort of a wishy-washy crop just like any crop really but apparently it was wishy-washy just grapes uh or do you have to grow it a certain way to just leave it on the stem longer or? uh all i know is that like the flavor of foods depends on how ripe they are. Everybody, everybody so, knows grapes leads to raisins. Nobody knows the middleman. We don't know what actually happens. We just know it turns into raisins. Again, like we saw, it involves a piano. Yeah. But so sixteen tons. Back then, it's like it's harder to. It's like if you squish, like you squish something really hard, right? It becomes a diamond. Right. You squish a diamond hard enough, it becomes a raisin. <laughs> I think that's, that's how it happens. So they created the National Raisin Reserve, and I think there was a surplus of raisins in California, and they had to figure out how how do we get rid of all these raisins. Uh-huh. So they approached Will Vinton, I believe was the man behind the Noid at that point. They approached him, they designed the raisins, And California raisins got popular. I think it was somewhat controversial that they only really became popular advertising sun-made raisins because there were other companies. Yeah. So sun-made raisins started selling a lot of raisins, but then it called for more of a demand on raisins. And, of course... Raisin history is very complex. Of course. And I can see you're very interested. So I'll try to make it quick. It was complex because they were usually supposed to get paid back. The farmers were usually supposed to get paid back um, whatever leftovers there was from the raisin reserves, you know. But all the money that came about from that was going towards making more raisins stuff and so it was it was kind of costing the raisin growers money to to keep to make the california raisins oh man and then there was this one guy who like protested it and stopped sending in his raisins and just kept all his raisins i know that the california raisins ended in uh 1994 because the funding was disproportionate. Uh-huh. Um, so this is kind of separate, but raisin related. In 2015, there was a raisin farmer who finally was able to like sue the government 
for their mandatory taking of half the crops. Because the raisin reserve wasn't, like, voluntary. If it was voluntary, I don't think they would have had this problem. But it was mandatory, so they would take up to half your crops, That's you know? Lines, like communism. I would say it would probably be communism if it wasn't initially the farmers who had asked to start it up and then the government just sanctioned it yeah and so that's why i say it should have been voluntary you know yeah i mean it did a good job of keeping the market prices stable stable and everything but he stopped giving his raisins in like 2003 or 2004 the same 2003 the same year that mary kate and ashley Sweet 16 License to Drive, Game So Good They Named It Twice, came out. The first time that beautiful song graced our ears. He stopped giving all his raisins away like 11 years prior. And then in 2015, finally sued the government because it took him 11 years to really start doing anything about it. Because that's how bureaucracy works. Mm -hmm. But this is a raisin podcast, so we won't talk about that. But Raisin Reserved was ruled unconstitutional by the Supreme Court in 2015. It took him that long to realize that... I I posted it on my Twitter account, but just there was, like, the article that I got most of my information from was actually posted in... No, sorry. The one I read from was, like, 2017. So, there was an article that I read in, like, 2013... Or, I didn't read it in 2013. There was an article that I read from 2013 that said something like, The Raisin Reserve is legally immortal. And then, (laughs) two years later, the government declared it unconstitutional. So, it was pretty good. So, yeah. The California raisins costed the raisin growers too much. And then they figured out the government costed the raisins too much. So, that's just how it went. Damn, so that's that's how they went down. And now, these messages. California vineyards. Don't you know I heard it through the great Sounds great, doesn't it? Okay, now let's get back to the California Raisin Show. I, ne- I never thought I'd, I'd know this much about raisin history and economy, but uh, who knew? I I know. There is there is just worlds of knowledge and even niche stuff. You know? Oh yeah, and I love I love diving in. I mean, it. we you picked up all that off of a, a song from Mary Kate and Ashley, "Sweet Sixteen, um, License to Drive," and that's that's got its own history. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, that's all I can think of right now. But he told me a few things about it. You know, mm-hmm. it's a whole history that if I hadn't asked about it, him and the other band members and maybe the producer would have known, and then it would have been lost time. Oh yeah, just like that song. You know? Yeah. Do uh, oh yeah, fair. What what uh, what's he doing now? Is he still producing music or working in games or um, smoking pot? <laughs> all the above. I believe he still works in games. He does like photography. I don't know that he still does music. Although I'm sure he still would like to, because I think his website had like a link to his music and then his photography and then. He's got an eye for, like, cars. He, like, drives this really sweet truck, and he said... License to drive. Yeah, he's got that license to drive, (laughs) man. All I know is he's a very cool guy, and once again, I'm honored. Oh, yeah, and he went out of the way to to get that computer out of storage, and... Yeah. That's, like, that's sweet. It's pretty live. It's big for lost media, too, because who knows how long... I mean, that, that that was never found in the first place, but, um... There's no way to hear that song except the 30 second clip of putting it in an actual GameCube. So that's really big for, for preserving it. And even if you even if you were able to like tear it from the game files, it'd probably have Mary Kate and Ashley talking over it still. Yeah. 
Okay. Let's start talking about Meet the Raisins. I want to get into some of the uh, okay. some of the scenes. Okay, I'm going to read off my notes and I'm going to try to figure out what it was. My first one says, uh, it ain't too proud. When they sang ain't too proud and it was blunt on the mountain. Because I don't know what fruit that was or what veggie. <laughs> <laughs> it just looked like a blunt. <laughs> it was a leak. What the hell is a leak? <laughs> But um, they mentally tortured that poor man and threatened his life on multiple occasions. And, and then had him free fall and caught him. And then they're called heroes. They're the reason he was falling. I'm sorry. Did you all, did you all. just say they're the reason he he was falling? All right, it's been fun. <laughs> uh, God, dude, and it was all publicity stunt. It's it's schemy. It's slimy. <laughs> They did it on purpose. They're like, see, we saved this man. And they didn't save anybody. He was crying. He feared for his life. Remember that? And they're over there like, I ain't too proud or whatever that song <laughs> is. Tap dancing on the teeter-totter. It's, it's immoral. It was wrong. So what we're saying is um, there's probably a little bit of racism that's not okay in these times but we would definitely if you're into raisins or if you're into 80s weirdness um meet the raisins is probably a good choice for you oh i couldn't recommend it enough i mean there was some questionable stuff about from what we could tell and the spaghetti western be be aware that our complexion is very very fair so (laughs) yeah our stance on this we're not going to dwell on it too much but there were some questionable representations of italians stereotypes of of, of uh, spanish people yeah um definitely uh, some questionable things about african americans that could be taken out of context um yeah i agree so please don't take it out of context please 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 America, do not cancel the raisins. Oh, it's my livelihood. I, I don't know what I would do if if my my ma- <laughs> the California raisins have ceased to exist for the past twenty seven years. Um, okay, my second note: fine ass tomatoes. Okay, so I don't know what is with the, the raisins, but apparently in their media, there's this thing where like the tomatoes, it's always a female and they're always hot. Like it, canonically, they're supposed to be, you know. Because we saw we saw three tomatoes in that special. Two of them were around their manager and were supposed to be, you know, attractive women. That's what they were supposed to be. And then um, the third one was during the phone sex line bit, which I did not expect out of that. Um, and, of course, it was supposed to be a seductive tomato. And then I have seen one clip of the California Raisin Slow show. One clip about eight seconds. And all it was was them walking in a mall. And then um, one of them was like, hey, look at the fun ladies over there or something like that. And it was these two tomatoes that were, uh, once again, supposed to be attractive women. So I don't know what it is about tomatoes, but they're freaking horn for them in the in the in the California raisins universe. cinematic universe, the raisin universe. I just thought I'd point that out because it, it, they kept it going in the special, and I thought that was interesting. Somebody at Will Vinton Studios had a had a fetish for tomatoes. Yep. Um, <laughs> my other note. Okay, my other one said, "What well, says grapes? They are smooth, but they are still raisins." But we already discussed that, and that it it completely breaks breaks. The can the, the raisin cannon. And then um my next one is Alien Half. <laughs> what was that scene again? He was- my Alien Half does not speculate, Captain. However, my raisin half says Because it was it was Spock as one of the raisins. Yeah, there was it was it was a parody of Star Trek. <laughs> my, my alien half does not speculate, but my raisin <laughs> half goes Ooh, uh, ooh, <laughs> whatever it is, they started their <laughs> they song. They just started singing. Uh, it was, that was like <laughs> probably the only thing that I don't know if it intentionally was supposed to make you laugh, but it was the one thing that actually made me genuinely laugh. That- not not because it was bad, just because it was actually like it was funny. It wasn't actually meant to be like the joke itself. It wasn't, it but was- the ridiculousness of it be- made it a joke itself. Oh yeah, they all fucking die. That's what I put next. Um, they were frozen and put, they went to, okay, first of all, they went to Antarctica, right? And I know everybody, there's the big thing where, like, Metallica was supposed to be the first band to play on every continent. It wasn't Metallica, it was actually the Raisins, apparently. (laughs) Because they played to a bunch of snowmen. And then they froze and died, and then they flew in, they, they, remember, they flew their plane and crashed into that concert, and it's what got them famous. Um, 
they they they, they flew into a lake lake broccoli concert <laughs> and lake broccoli is the uh the punk rock broccoli I guess he's supposed to be like Johnny Rotten or the Sex the Sex Pistols or something. But he uh, has nipples. He has nipples. The broccoli has. They nipples. animated nipples on him. Yeah. Um. But they flew into his concert and then they thawed out and immediately went into song. Is incredible. <laughs> My next note was like broccoli has nipples. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then uh, yeah, I forgot about this. You know the what's his name? I forgot the guy that actually sings for the Raisins. He was like legit. Obviously, he was a good singer. Like, he recorded with, like, Jimi Hendrix and stuff. Like, the dude was... So, the actual singer. Yeah, like, he was up there. Like, he played with Jimi Hendrix stuff. And then my last one was, I guess, Sex Phone Line. But I guess we already, we already talked about that. Uh, one note that I made is that at the very end, they said something. Here's one we've been working on, you know? And they started singing, heard it through the grapevine. Uh, we were waiting for it the whole whole show and then oh, yeah. they finally did it at the end so a little bit of fan service Damn. there credits roll <laughs> but it implies that they wrote all these songs which in real life there's all these different artists who wrote these songs oh yeah that part of bag tutti fruity they even i don't even know how they get the rights to that one or the uh i guess if it's a uh a cover you don't need it but they didn't market it. I so. think it was. I think it was freaking questionable. You're right. Back they didn't. Then. They didn't write it. Zoot wrote it. <laughs> the, the cantaloupe. They kicked out of the band. Zoot is the the fall guy. Like yeah. if they get into legal trouble, they just say, "Oh, Zoot told us this was Zoot. a real song." It's Zoot. I thought they were going to do like a Beatles thing because like uh, you know that there was actually a fifth Beatle. The original drummer got kicked out because he was. He got all the ladies and was too attractive, so they kicked him <laughs> out of the band and got Ringo. That, but um, just a little history lesson there. But thank that, you. I, that that reminded me of it. But, um, I think they were they were parodying the Beatles. Yeah, with they the had Meet the, the Raisins cover. Yeah, and then uh, in the Mad TV one did the same thing, the same album cover. That was a great one. Oh, the Mad the, TV. The Mad parody. TV one was oh, pretty so good. good. Again dark humor not like oh yeah not necessarily questionable but the freaking marilyn manson grape at the or not marilyn, marilyn manson. manson what a oh charles, charles manson, manson grape. grape yeah and then john wayne grapey yeah at the very beginning a little weird but i think it was, that's it was very funny though if you, if you don't par. watch meet the raisins I, it's like 27 minutes watch the mad tv parody because it's like three minutes of gold it's it was definitely on par with what Mad TV usually does, you know. Yeah. And they were, they were trashing their hotel and they had a bunch of ladies there. And I did notice that some of the ladies were grapes. So once again, I'm a little confused. <laughs> I yeah. Um, I mean, I, obviously it's Mad TV. It's not canon, but there was grapes. I saw them. <laughs> you just can't know. I mean, I don't know. What do we? How did it become in canon? How do they become raisins? Because none of the other fruit rots. None of it shrinks. None of it expires, apparently. They did murder that corn on live TV. I forgot about that. Remember in that? He wasn't murdered. He was... He was... It was a she. The little was corn a kernel. She was a... I don't know that it was a she. Really? I thought it was It was a very high-pitched voice gentleman. Oh. Well, it was a... Uh, it could be whatever it wants to be, but... I, I believe it was meant to be like a high pitched gentleman, okay. it was like a the, very nerdy the pop, guy. The, the corn was a bad singer, so the uh, the host popped the corn. Yeah, but he was still sentient after he popped. Oh, yeah, like the little corn kernels were all moving around. I think that guy was a lime, but I'm not sure. He was disgusting. Whatever he was, <laughs> he was literally. Like well, he's not the worst animation. But the worst looking thing that I've ever seen yeah. in that show. And we did also see a lot of Zoot. But I think the Lime guy was the worst. He was, oh, yeah, it was, his it was movement hard to look was at. just awful. His face was, was really unsettling, too. And the fact that um, he had, like, pants on, right? But only, only the top that was the fruit moved. The rest of it was just... Oh. non-moving yeah it was crazy <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was it was definitely something to, to watch i'm glad you you put it on dvd just for us to find it on what was a daily motion <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm sure that the DVD has other features, but we're not watching them. There was a couple um, celebrities that were raisins. I know one of them was Michael Jackson. What was the other one? That's a good question. Was it Marvin? Marvin Gaye? Might have been. I don't remember. Because that's what I was thinking. Marvin Gaye is the one who originally sang Heard It Through the Grapevine. I think it and was so Marvin I guess Gaye, he probably he probably had to be on board with it to like sign it over. Yeah. But like it, them claiming that they wrote it, like what the heck? Yeah. I just, it makes me wish that um, they had more celebrity um, endorsements so that they would have a, cause they made, there's an actual Michael Jackson, Jackson raisin you can buy. Like, yep. Probably cop that relatively soon in celebration of this <laughs> podcast. But, um, oh God, imagine if they had like the, the, the ones they could have, dude. Like, uh, I don't know, like Guns N' Roses or maybe maybe some, like, Brett the Hitman Heart or something, something. I know that. Out of the blue. Paul McCartney really liked the first ter- the first commercial that they did, the which is the one where the construction worker is, we're big Raisin fans, so we just know all the commercials, but the one where the construction worker opens up He's his lunch bunch, kit yeah. and the Raisins come out and dance on his sandwich. Mm-hmm. Paul McCartney loved that, and so whenever I was reading up on Raisins, I found where the lead guy at Sunmaid talked about how Paul McCartney's assistant called him and asked for a copy of the commercial so that Paul McCartney could watch it on repeat. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Paul McCartney was such a big fan of that one California Raisins commercial. I like the one that goes 16. Can you send that one to me? Gosh, <laughs> oh that's goodness. that's incredible. A man of culture. Really, he is. you have any more on your list? No, I think I, I touched up on all of it. I, I really hope I'm not forgetting anything. I really don't have much left. I'm I'm going to, through a, a, a long line of things, I'm going to imagine this like a magic trick. I'm going to connect it. To the namesake of this podcast, Transformers. Easier than you might think. And I can I'm gonna make it like a like a circle too, so it all comes back around. The raisins originally showed up in 1986 and were created by Will Vinton Studios. Uh Uh-huh. Will Vinton Studios became the company that's now known as Leica or Leica. I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but they're the company that did Coraline, Paranorman, Kubo, and the Two Strings. No way. All of them stop motion animated. Incredible animation. The son of the owner of Leica, uh, or Leica, who directed Kubo and the Two Strings, is a gentleman named Travis Knight, who directed the most recent Transformers movie, Bumblebee. Really? So that is how I connected it to Transformers. Now let me bring it back around. Bumblebee featured references to The Breakfast Club, which had Judd Nelson in it as the, like, slacker kid. And Bumblebee mimics the, like, pose that he does at the end of Breakfast Club whenever it freeze frames and everything. That's uh, Judd Nelson played Hot Rod in Transformers the movie. He voice acted Hot Rod, the original movie. Mm-hmm. And then that movie came out in... 1986. So it all comes back around. It's all the same. It's all pretty, pretty red. Good year. Very good year. It was. I, I think if I was going to name anything that was, of course, I wasn't around back then, but if I was going to name anything that I thought of as quintessentially 80s, I would think 1986 fits in good oh, yeah. for that, um, you know? What did Back to the Future come out? 85. So close. I know. What did 2 come out? Was that 86? Two came out in eighty nine. Now, yeah, in eighty nine, I thought they filmed it back to back. So they filmed. Or maybe this, this the movie gives that impression. They filmed two and three back to back. Oh, okay. they filmed two and three at the same time. Actually, it's got to be a nightmare to manage. I'm sure it was very confusing for Michael J. Fox and Chris Lloyd and oh, yeah. all of them. We can't turn this into a Back to the Future podcast. It's a podcast. You can go wherever you want. But I, I will, 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 will end it on some raisin stuff if I can think of a little bit. Back to the Future one came out in eighty five, 
And then Back to the Future 2 came out in 89. And you can kind of tell because it's mimicking the 80s because Back to the Future 1 came out in 85. And so in 89, whenever they go to the future, they're sitting there in the writer's room thinking, what is the future of 1985 going to look like? What's a quintessentially 80s future? Mm-hmm. Because oh, I think they did that on purpose. I think it's a brilliant move because it makes it actually timeless. They're oh, not yeah. trying to look at, I mean, they were trying to look at what the future was going to be, but they did it in a way that was more of what they know. More and comical too. Yeah. Yeah. And I also think it came out very well to influence the 90s maybe because all the bright colors in the future and just oh i think think it could have led to the 90s kind of like the the 90s sort of bright vanilla ice yeah the neon and the bright colors and all the colorful you know other other part of the um the 90s that's more uh like grunge and dark and it did less vibrant which of course eventually led to 16 right but that would have been that would have been the late 90s yeah. So, but um, and of course, there's all there's time is a complicated thing. It is. Uh, but I just I like I like Back to the Future too because it's a movie from 1989 that feels like it belongs in both the 80s and the 90s mm-hmm. because of that. Is that how it's done? Do I need to sun dry them? Is it safe to eat? I mean, um, I ba- borderline rotten fruit. <laughs> <laughs> They're called sun dried raisins because they are sun dried, mm-hmm. and I think what's that the difference of letting it bake in a field or bake on my counter? You know what I mean? Because your counter is different in the fact that it doesn't have the sun. The sun has a lot of UV radiation <laughs> and sad. stuff that kills bacteria. I didn't do the research, yeah, man. Man, you but can put some sanitizer on it. You're fine. <laughs> Those are going to be some nasty <laughs> grip. You're also keeping them hydrated if you keep putting sanitizer on them. Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's sterile. I don't know. It also makes me wonder, like, who, who thought of grapes? Somebody just, like, left their grape. Their gra- who thought of raisins? Somebody left their grapes. I was like, oh, it looks like shit. I'm going to eat one. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, I guess it's also in the line of, like, who ate the first, who cooked the first egg. Right. Like, ew. Uh, it's freaking poultry period. Let me pop it in my, my pan. <laughs> so they, so they invented pans before they <laughs> cooked oh, yeah. the first egg. <laughs> <laughs> what came first, the egg or the pan? <laughs> Let me pop this on my rock. <laughs> 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 yeah, and stir it with my rock. Well, no, what they did is they went to their their grapes they left out in the sun to sun dry them. And they pop they propped their egg, they popped their egg right next to it. We got been been in the sun and, and the eggs, <laughs> dude. Been in the sun and tiny goodbye are personally S-tier. my favorite. They're S two favorite names for them. You well, know, you know who Justin X Grape is, right? He's Remember the, the dude guy who, who plays, killed... he plays no, no, he plays no instrument. He's just the, the guy that just blazed out of his mind. That raisin? That's Justin X Grape. <laughs> of course. That's why it's Justin X Grape, because he plays fucking instrument. He's just a raisin. <laughs> <laughs> Lame as hell. <laughs> I was going to say he's the guy. Just, he's just a roadie, but he goes around to all the parties of the women and he's like, yeah, I'm a California raisin. I was going to say he was the guy who shot the, Martin Luther King. All the tomato. <laughs> <laughs> Malcolm X Grape. Can <laughs> we say that? <laughs> I think that's getting cut. I don't know. Pretty good. <laughs> Malcolm X Grape. <laughs> Malcolm X didn't even kill Martin Luther King. I know, but they're in the same universe. <laughs> I don't have anything else. <laughs> oh my god. Is this the end of the road? I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's wrap it up then. Alright, bye. <laughs>
I've had a good time talking to my friend Aaron Lamb about uh who lives on <laughs> about I said it, but he has to edit it. It's probably a dick move. <laughs> I had a good time talking to my friend Aaron Lamb about the California Raisins and about our common interest in the the song 16. Oh, yeah. And the the journey to... uh, We've learned a lot of history today, both on on Raisins and video games. And (laughs) (laughs) it's getting cut, but I'm leaving that in. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) They don't have to know the context. <laughs> but uh, this has been the Generation One More Time podcast. Thank you once again to Mr. Troy Jacobson. You can find him on tumbleweed.com or reverbnation.com slash Troy Jacobson. You can also find me on patreon.com slash Hylanos. Patreon? And you can find Aaron Lamb on... Where can we find you, Aaron? <laughs> In the sun. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, bye. Hey, this is Future Garrett from that podcast you just listened to. I just wanted to get on and say we made a few factual errors when recording this podcast. It was late at night, and it's just for fun, really. We know that Malcolm X Grape is not the one who shot Martin Luther King. We know that grapes, obviously are not what comes before raisins. And the main factual error I'd like to fix is that Mr. Troy Jacobson can be found at tumbledweed.com. Um, he has a lot of photography you can check out there, quite a few paintings that you can check out there. Um, he's a very creative gentleman, and I've enjoyed talking to him and learning from him everything we said in this podcast again just for fun and everywhere i've spoken about will be linked in the description